In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to assemble our new Tough Extruder V2. The Tough Extruder V2 is the successor to our original Tough Extruder V1, which was a Titan-based design. This may look at first glance like a BMG, but this actually has a little more to it. As you can see here, the inside housing is a lot different. We also have really high quality coated gears to drive your filament, and it's a dual drive gear extruder. So I'm gonna go over how to assemble it from start to finish, and we're gonna use our Ender 2 Pro as the demo machine. If you're looking to print more reliably and print flexible filaments, this extruder is great because it's got a lot of torque thanks to the gearing, and it also makes sure that it pushes the filament consistently thanks to its dual drive gear design. So let's get to it. So this is the Tough Extruder V2 completely disassembled. Now when you get this from us, typically the feed gear here is already going to be pre-installed into the shell. I just have this completely taken apart so you guys can see what it looks like and where everything goes in the event that you need to completely disassemble the extruder. The first thing to do is take your gear and you'll see here there's two sides of the shaft. We're going to put a bearing on here and then we're going to put the little spacer and a bearing on the other end that's on the side of the gear. Now take this assembly and put it into the front side of the housing. The front side is the one with our sticker on it. Just like this. And the back piece will go on like this. Before we put the back piece on, we want to go ahead and install the guide. And then if you're doing a Bowden mount, you're going to go ahead and put the Bowden adapter in. Then take the arm here. Make sure on the arm you have this little pin in place and put the arm into the body. And then take the rear and put it on here. Make sure everything lines up. This little pin will go into the hole here. This bearing will go into the hole up top here and this little adapter will go into the groove here. Now we're going to attach the tensioner. The tensioner should be assembled with the spring first and then the little nylon washer. Screw that into the arm here. And once you start feeling tension, go ahead and give it five turns. And we want a little bit of tension on here, but enough that we can still pull the arm out. Now, when you install this on your printer, this is the gear that goes onto your motor shaft. Now, depending on how thick the mounting plate is between your stepper motor and the extruder, you will either put it in with this face facing the motor, or you can also install it the other way. The important part is to make sure that the side of the teeth here, that is the flat side, is fully meshing with the gear inside here. We're going to go ahead and install this on our Ender 2 Pro and this installation will be the same process for most Creality printers and most other printers. Now, if you already have filament in your printer, go ahead and heat the hot end and remove the filament before continuing. Let's go ahead and take our existing extruder off. Make sure to remove your old feed gear from your old stepper motor. Now we need to put the new feed gear onto the extruder. Now remember, we have to make sure that this is set at a distance that will fully mesh with the actual gear on the new extruder here. So we want to make sure that the flat face here on our new feed gear is fully meshing with the gear on the new extruder. If you don't do this, it will cause issues and potentially damage the gear here. The easiest way to do that is to take this top cover off Take the gear out. Go ahead and test the fitment to see where we need to set this gear at. I can see this is riding a little bit up, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. And we're gonna need to set this gear a little bit up on the shaft. When you attach the gear, make sure the grub screw, which is the little black thing, is on the flat side of your motor shaft if it has one. So we want to go up just a little bit, tighten it down. So make sure that this actually bit in, try to pull up on it. If it doesn't move, you're good. And if we go ahead and test fit this again, 
we can see that this is seated correctly on the gear. So go ahead and put this back together just like we did earlier. If the two halves won't go together, you can pull this out a little bit or just take this off and put it back on again. But now this is ready to be put on the printer. Take the three long screws and put them through the body. And we want to make sure that the filament is entering this side and exiting this side. So it'll go on just like this on this printer. And now just tighten these down. Make sure not to over tighten them. Now, before we go any further, make sure that this gear spins smoothly. If you feel resistance, loosen these screws up and shift this around until you feel it spin smoothly and then tighten them back down. If you over tighten these, you will warp the case and it will not move smoothly. But in this case, I got it right the first time. If your extruder did not already come with a fitting installed here, it just presses in just like on the other side. And this little piece of included PTFE is meant to be used as a guide tube. And then put the little locking clip on. Now, in my case, I have a filament sensor, so I'm going to cut this tube shorter because otherwise the filament sensor is going to be too far away. I want it right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my PTFE cutter and cut the tubing right here. And you can see here that'll go right there. Let's flip this back around. Take the push fitting and insert it into the fitting here. Insert your Bowden tube all the way until it stops. And then put the clip on. And that's all there is to installing this. The only thing we have to do now is change our firmware settings. This extruder uses 407 steps per millimeter on most printers with 1 16th stepping drivers. Now, if you're using our unified firmware, we have the option directly in the LCD to change the steps per millimeter. This particular extruder does not typically require reversing your motor direction. So to do that from the LCD, I'm going to hit the button here. I'm going to go to configuration, advanced settings and steps per millimeter. And we're going to change our E steps here to 407. Go back up. Go down to store settings. And you'll hear the confirmation beep. Now these steps per millimeter are set. You can also set this directly in the firmware. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And the benefit to setting it in the firmware instead of setting it on the LCD is if you reset your EEPROM, the settings will stay. So if I reset my EEPROM right now, it's going to revert back to the 95 default setting that is set in the firmware, which is what Creality uses for most of their machines. So this is the configuration file for this printer. I saved this last time I updated it. And all I need to do is tell this that we're going to use a custom E-step setting. So if you scroll down in our firmware, you will find a custom E-step option. To use this, all you need to do is uncomment this line and then change this value from the default to whatever the extruder uses. In our case, this extruder is 407. And then I'm going to recompile the firmware and upload it to the printer. This setting is available in all Unified 2 firmware versions, whether it's for the Ender 2 Pro or any other machine we support. Now, if your machine is running the motor in the wrong direction, you can go ahead and uncomment this line right here like that, and it will change the direction. Now, most machines that have the same type of extruder that we took off here, which is that single feed gear one, will not need the e-motor reverse, but if your machine does for some reason need it reverse, this option is available in our firmware. I just updated the firmware on here. Now, if I go to my settings, the configuration and reset EEPROM, and I go back into the steps per millimeter setting, we should see that new value I just put into the firmware. And you can see there it's 407. So now this printer has the default setting for the EE set to 407, and this is supported on all versions of our firmware. I'm ready to print at this point. The install is done.
So I've told my hot end to heat. I'm gonna go ahead and load filament back up in here and loading filament is very easy. To load filament into our extruder, all you do is pull back on this little lever here and shove the filament into this. Because this is a fully guided path, this is a lot easier to use than the stock extruders that come with most printers. As always, before you insert your filament, cut it at a 45 degree angle. I usually like to straighten mine out a little bit. If you have a filament sensor, remember to feed it through the sensor first and then into the extruder. Now I'm ready to print.